We have uh, one more professional award to present, and that is the Paul Tabenkin Memorial Award. And Professor Elena Cabral will tell you about its background and present it to this year's winner. Elena? The Paul Tabankin Memorial Award honors the late New York Herald Tribune reporter and recognizes outstanding achievements in reporting on racial or religious hatred, intolerance, or discrimination in the United States. Jurors for this award were Daniela Alarcón, Lonnie Isabel, and myself. Jaywalking is a minor infraction that occurs with regularity in many urban areas. I'm sure some of you are guilty of it yourselves. In Jacksonville, Florida, though, African Americans, particularly men, have been ticketed disproportionately. The investigative project, Walking While Black, chronicled the discriminatory practice of ticketing in mostly black and poor neighborhoods and the remarkably detrimental effect it has on the lives of those who are ticketed. A citation for such offenses as walking on the wrong side of the street or in the street or crossing at less than a right angle at a corner could lead to the loss of a driver's license, a job, or a good credit rating. And as we know, those are not small things. Topher Sanders of ProPublica and Ben Connick of the Florida Times Union, who just two years ago was sitting right where you are right uh, today, used savvy street reporting and data from several local and state agencies to show stark racial disparities across every category of tickets given to pedestrians. They showed that police in Jacksonville and throughout Florida issued thousands of erroneous tickets and inaccurately told pedestrians they had to carry ID by law. They also captured video of police officers themselves casually jaywalking with some frequency. Walking while black had an immediate impact. The sheriff sought clarification from the state attorney on the interpretation of the law and ordered officers to stop ticketing pedestrians who are not carrying ID. It became an element of bias for training for officers working in predominantly black neighborhoods and state lawmakers said the series prompted concern and gave them reason to revise pedestrian statutes. Sanders and Karnak's video, done in collaboration with Vox, got 2.8 million views on Facebook and another 1.5 million views on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's incredibly powerful. For their far-sighted, meticulously reported investigation that raises critical questions about how the criminal justice system treats one population versus others, we are proud to award the journalists behind Walking While Black the Paul Tabankin Memorial Award. Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you, John, and thank you, uh, Maggie, for those uh, wonderful words. I'm about to bring down the level of excellence here, um, so uh, prepare for that. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, again, thank you, judges. Thank you, Columbia University. And you know, thank you to the graduates here. Uh, you've made it this far. You're about to go do some wonderful things. So I'm excited to see what you'll do. And I want to say thank you to both the staffs at the Florida Times Union and ProPublica. You're looking at my mug, you're looking at Ben's mug, and uh, you're looking at some of the names of the people who helped uh, produce this work. There's a whole team behind us at the Florida Times Union and at ProPublica that helped us get across the finish line, and they deserve a ton of credit. And if you have strong teams, that means you have strong leadership. And in Ben and I's case, uh, that leadership came in the form of editors Mary Kelly Palka and my editor, Joe Sexton, at ProPublica. Um, when everyone else, uh, rightfully so, is doing deep dives into police shootings and to use of force, Mary Kelly Palka and Joe Sexton championed, trumpeted, and supported a project that on his face was about jaywalking tickets. Um, but they allowed us through our reporting to show that it was about much more than that. Um, and then for that trust, uh, we are internally grateful. Okay, let me give you a bit of an origin story. Um, I'm a comic book nerd, so I love origin stories. 
And, uh, and I'm a comic book nerd from the 80s, not like $1 billion box office comic book nerd, but like, you know, stuffed in a locker comic book nerd. And so um, I like a good origin story, but more importantly, this origin story is instructive. It's instructive on the power of local journalism and on the power of partnership. So it's 2015, and I'm just hired by ProPublica and moved to the city. And a few months later, right at the beginning of 2016, I get an invite to come speak at one of the Stabil classes. So I get there, and I'm regaling them with my misadventures of local journalism. And there's one student who would just not let other students ask any questions. I mean, at the various faint of a breath and pause in a sentence, his hands shooting up and asking and waving and doing spirit fingers. It was, uh, it was pretty intense. And uh, in all seriousness, that student just wanted to talk about reporting, talk about journalism, and that student was Ben Konark. And, and so, then, <laughs> so then a few weeks later, Ben Konark slips into my DMs. And, and he's talking to me about journalism and reporting. And again, he just wants to talk about the craft. And he also wanted to talk about a job that was open at my former gig. It was essentially my old job. So long story short, uh, he gets the job. Sorry. Um, he gets the job, and he starts writing amazing stories, looking at police shootings, looking at how police are using technology to track protesters, really great stuff. Then he writes a daily story about a young man named Devontae Shipman. And Devontae's, he filmed an encounter that he had with a police officer, and the police officer trying to give him a, a jaywalking ticket. And that encounter went viral. And, and Ben wrote an excellent story, a daily story, that ferreted out the idea, the issue that the ticket that Devontae was given wasn't even legitimate. It was a bad ticket. It was a ticket that was only meant for motorists, but the cop tried to give it to to Devante for simply walking around his community. And then I watched that video, and what I saw was a black man being told by a white officer that he couldn't walk around one of the states in our United States of America without his ID. I saw a black man being told to show him his papers. So I called up Ben, and instantly we agreed that there was more to the story, and we started on this journey. And this story isn't, isn't possible without having a partnership between a muckraking local journalist and a national outlet like ProPublica with some muscle and some resources. So I just want to leave that with you to really explore the idea of partnership and be willing and open to do that because it can generate powerful journalism. So this country struggles with looking at itself on issues of race, um, looking at itself in the mirror on issues of race. Journalism is one of two to three entities, the arts and the courts being the other two, that have a demonstrated history of being able to hold that mirror up and allow communities, allow us to see ourselves and see our concerns and issues when it comes to race. But now I believe that in some small measure, that's what we were able to do at Walking While Black. We were able to hold a mirror up to the Jacksonville community, allow them to see themselves. What our story really is though, it's a window. It's a window into the policing that occurs in black and brown communities every day. It doesn't, cause head, doesn't generate headlines, doesn't generate protests, but what it does do is it, it's the very beginning of where relationships between law enforcement and communities begin to erode. Ben and I are honored and humbled to receive this recognition because it goes to the very heart of why we started this work. It looked like a story about jaywalking but really it was a story about how race is lived in this country. Thank you very much and congratulations to the graduates.